I'm going to take a look at these two amplifier heads, uh, this um, WEM1 and this Marshall1, and then we're going to look inside and compare them and eventually uh, see what they sound like because they're both based on the push pull EL84s on the output with two ECC83 preamps. They both got uh, two channels. And um, they were both meant for PA. This is the Marshall uh, PA20, model 1917, made about 1970. And this one's a lot earlier, made about 1965. It's called the Control ER15 and was used for PA and also um, for bass and guitar on their piggyback uh, speakers. And um, it's much smaller, as you can see. And uh, but both with the same uh, valve complement, except this uses uh, an EZ a EZ80 uh, valve rectifier, which we'll see when we open it up. And uh, this one uses um, a diode rectification. Now, just looking at them, obviously this one's smaller. And when Watkins always went for um, minimum uh, construction, uh, ch the cheapest construction they could. Uh, it's fairly lightweight. It uses a fairly cheap, thin sort of aluminium uh, for the chassis as well. Whereas Marshall went for heavy duty, uh, well constructed cabinet, very tough for the rough treatment it's going to get, and uh, much stronger chassis as we'll see, and generally a much more professional item. I did a few notes. This one only weighs. Uh, where is it? 5.8 kilograms, and this one weighs 9.8 kilograms, almost double. But once we open them up and look inside, we we'll see that the circuits are very similar. There's the back, obviously, um, grills. This one's got a, a few extra fuse selector, and uh, this one's just got the um, output on the side because it was meant to fit. Uh, on top with this um, these little sockets here on top of a speaker but you can see the valve here has got an adjustment for the voltage and it's got this uh, nice strap around the back for the um, you can strap the mains lead this one's got a, a mini bulge in some had the uh, bigger bulge in plug and uh, for some reason it's got um, an, extra, an extra hole. I think there was um, like a, uh, a little connector on there for connecting off an output to another amplifier or something. Anyway, I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to take this apart and do this as part one. And then I'll do this as part two. And then I uh, probably might do a part three where they, we test them side by side. Uh, 1917, as you can see, um, still got the plate. So um, I'm going to start on this one and uh, see what we can find inside. After taking out two long screws that go up underneath, through here. Um, four screws that are just screwed into the wood on the front that hold the front panel in. Uh, you can just pull the amp out. It's got a bit of extra flex and the mains cable goes out through that hole. So looking inside we've just got a pretty flimsy uh, aluminium chassis as per normal. Uh, keep the cost down. Uh, the old-fashioned uh, mains transformer is pretty open construction. You can see where all the wire taps come out from the paper into the leave-in. There's the output transformer again. Uh, <laughs> just wound around some sort of like paper insulation. Um, these uh, resistor capacitors are just for high frequency stability. WEM always did that, but most other manufacturers didn't bother. They found the transformers lasted okay anyway. Now, I have serviced this amp before I've done this video, so some of the components and a little few little mods I've already done, but not much. All the components here are pretty much uh, 
standard um, as they were. It's been made um, as cheap as possible, just the components just wired point to point, try and keep uh, costs down, bits of wire and components just uh, wired wherever they can. Now here, this uh, original big capacitor gives us a clue to the date. You can't see it, but written on the side here, it says May 1964. So it's obviously made after May 1964, so it's around late 64, early 65. Uh, the EL84s, they wear out, so I matched up a pair and put them in there. Uh, there's a little uh, rectifier valve, the UZ80 and a couple of ECC83 mullards. They don't, they don't wear out generally, they last forever. They're held in by little wire clips, which is all good. Uh, it's the original bulb, they seem to last forever as well. Uh, main switch on the back of, um, of one of the controls still works. Anyway, underneath... Let's have a look. As you can see, there's not a lot going on. Use some tag strips to for the components. Uh, there's the bottom of the smooth in, and you've got the uh, underneath for the voltage selection. Um, now, uh, no 110 volts on this one, it's just 240. As you can see, uh, in those days, they whoever assembled this, they used this um, little lacing technique to keep it all nice and tidy. I've changed a few components. I changed um, this capacitor here, which will be on the um, uh, bypass. It's probably uh, this one here on the circuit diagram on the input valve. And a little smoothing valve. Um, that would be this one up here. I've just changed that. Um, also, on the um, drop-in resistor here of the... Um, off the uh, rectification here, it should be 1.5k. It was a bit burnt up and the resistance was going high, so I changed that. I try not to change any other components at all. I don't want to change the sound, and if it's um, if they're fine, I don't change them. Uh, if you change all the components and modern ones, you lose the um, authentic sound, and uh, it's the whole charm of the thing is um, the way all the components are all over the place generally. Um, anyway, it's all neat, uh, it works. Now, um, and you see there's a buzz, you yeah, used a, a wire for the buzz bar, um, for the earthing, but um, everything is screwed to the chassis as well. You can see how thin the chassis is because it's bent, where it's been banged around, it bends very easy. It's very thin aluminium. Um, Anyway, the circuit diagram I've drawn out, the circuit diagram is very simple, but there is a mod you can do on this. Um, let's have a look. There's two inputs. It's meant for um, PA originally, this one, but it can be used for guitar or bass or anything. It goes straight into two pots, which um, is not done normally these days, especially with a guitar, because it means it's only got 250k load. And then straight into the valve. So... Um, Normally, uh, unless you've got a very high, uh, a reasonably high input, you don't want any noise off this pot. But anyway, that's how it works. And the two channels are identical, so they use half of one, half of uh, an ECC 383 each. Um, gain 100k on the anodes and 2k2 down here. Which is fairly normal, 1k5 you could use, and I have seen higher gains with 220k up here on some amps. So, and bypass the capacitor to try and get uh, max gain. So, looking at one, it just comes through uh, standard circuit, nothing special. Uh, had to go uh, tone control, treble. Well, the treble is either passes um, the treble through up here, treble comes through there, or down here, it cuts all the treble <laughs> to earth, so it's um, it's got a range, uh, works. Base is the same, Down when you move it down here, it adds two capacitors together to give you um, reasonable base going through, 
and if you turn it up to there, uh, just the base just goes to a smaller capacitor, so it cuts the base off. I expect they fiddled around with those values and got something that works okay. Anyway, so one circuit goes into this side of the uh, phase splitter in there, and the other one goes in the other side, so it's all very simple, but it's not much gain. So the only gain you've got is on one half of an ECC83 here. So it's not a very high gain amp whatsoever. If you put a guitar in it, and you have to turn the guitar up full and you still won't get much out of it. So you'd have to put a boost on the input. But I'm going to show you a mod I did, um, which turns this into quite a high gain amp, which is really nice. Anyway, the phase splitter. It's the type where they um, bias this with... Uh, 100k to 33k there to split the power supply into about one third onto the onto the grids. That's DC, and because any any ripple on here is applied equally to both sides, so it cancels out by the time it gets through here. So you don't get any hum or noise. Um, a lot of, uh, they didn't use this very often later on uh, in amps, but it does work fine. So that biases uh, this. So you've got phase splitter and you've got the input on one side, input on the other side, and it mixes uh, both the inputs on this phase splitter. And then you just got the outputs to the EL84 and push pull one here, one there. Um, they're running at, uh, obviously in pento mode, they've just strapped them directly to the power supply, the ac accelerator grid there, and um, this is all normal, 470k, 10k, a grid stopper. Uh, on the um, cathodes, you've got um, 130 ohm, 2 watt, which is shared by uh, both valves. Not bypass though, you can bypass that and get more gain. Uh, in their case, uh, they didn't. 130, 74 milliamps, no, they're not running uh, particularly hot. And then just into the output transformer, it's a reasonable size output transformer, can handle this 15 watts easily. Um, that's the high frequency stability for the va output valves, stops ringing, etc. So especially if the speaker's not connected, it, it saves the uh, valves from going um, high frequency ringing and, and destroying the transformer probably. Uh, so that's good. A lot of manufacturers didn't bother with that. Uh, but as the speaker is a plugged in one, you don't, and there's no load on here, it's probably a good idea. Uh, it's got a tap on the transformer, they don't use it, so they just use a 15 ohm. Um, rectification, that that capacitor there is a double 50. Um, I measured the voltage, it's only about 300, just over 300 volts, so it could take a lot more, but that's all the transformer gives. From the EZ80, um, it's standard uh, 6 volt heater, and that is uh, referenced also. To stop the heater breaking down, they join it there. And um, this is 300 300 uh, transformer. This is obviously 6.3 volts for the heaters, and they've got a lamp off there as well. And the mains just comes in with a tap. Two one amp fuses. Very simple circuit, uh, probably um, nothing special they have to make up. All this stuff will be available. Have to, Build a circuit like this from Muller, the valve manufacturers, and already in use for many years for 965 in um, radios and all sorts of things. So it's not special. Now, one thing I have done, and it's very easy to do, um, is to increase the gain. Now, as I said, if you plug a guitar in here, it, it's only got one gain stage, so it, it doesn't really give you much. Uh, but you've got two inputs why waste this one now it's a very easy thing to do we can f especially as these uh, little pots uh, i mean these little um inputs have got uh little brake connectors already on them uh, we could feed in one 
and then take it back out and feed it back into input two and then you'll get two gain stages you'll have two volume controls and two sets of tone controls as well but if you turn one up to full uh, you can just control it from the other one it works like a dream I'll demonstrate it later I'll just show you how that works you can have a high gain and, and then a low gain the low gain one is normal as the amp is already designed and works just uh, normally if you plug in here your guitar it breaks that connection on the uh, input plug socket and the signal will go through the pot volume pot as usual and then off through the um, tone controls and all the way through to Facebook like normal so it'd be exactly like normal but then if we mod this high gain uh, call it high gain one you plug in there it still works like normal but what we do is cut the circuit board uh, or the circuit just here where it's going into the valve here um, here the phase splitters See that 0.022 feeds in there. So if we cut it just there and uh, connect that to ground just to stop it, uh, any noise feeding in, uh, just put a little ground on there. And then this part of the circuit off the con tone controls, we're going to feed it back into the other socket like this. We just run a wire. And you just connect it to the um, little brake uh, contact. That brake contact normally went to earth. Just take it off earth and just run it that wire around to there. So now the output of this valve is goes through there into this one. So as soon as you plug it guitar into the high gain input, it goes through there down through there and into this one so with just a sync a little uh, mod there and a little mod on the switch you've now got a high gain low gain amp and the high gain amp as I'll demonstrate works fantastic on this amp really brings it alive for a guitar anyway that is the circuit very simple as I said I'm going to compare it to the Marshall some people think that uh, this came before the Marshall and they're the same. Um, I don't think uh, we'll find that they are. And uh, these circuits are not made up by the amp manufacturers. Okay, they modify them to suit for what they're doing, but it's all, all stuff that already existed. And um, they just adapted the circuits and just fiddled around with the tone controls just to get it to, um, do what they wanted it to do so that's that one um, the mods let me just show you um, where did I do the mod on this just trying to remember uh, you got your two sockets uh, one's here and one's there and I just uh, took the wire I believe uh, one of these wires I can't remember when I did it now, but it's ever so simple to just connect that wire down on the, on the um, break and make contact. And I've just run it up to the, uh, up there to the um, output of there, of the tone controls. And I've cut the circuit um, and added a ground. I think that's uh, underneath. So you just, there is the uh, capacitor, this one here, where is it, that one, which you cut, just like that, cut it off, and then the ground, so there's the capacitor, I've just added that little ground wire there, and that white wire was the original one that I've just, uh, just take, taken it off and cut, just, uh, put a bit of shrink on the end and pushed it out of the way and that was the wire that went off up there and now uh, all, all that gives me now it used to come up here and now I've just uh, 
got that wire connecting to there and the earth it used to be earth I've just taken it off just add, that was on them that earth went down there so I've just joined it onto that earth wire you could add a capacitor across the um, output here to get a bit more gain but I haven't because I want to preserve the sound of the amp uh, when you don't have a capacitor on here you do get in some interaction between the two valves uh, better compression and so I've left it off if you wanted to put it on it's very easy uh, the resistor is just here it's quite small you could just put a capacitor across it if you want <laughs>
the channel. I think you can still get a really good sound. I'm going to have to turn this to max. <laughs> sound but C trebles on max bass nearly max
plug it in the other channel. A bit more gain. side by side. 